apparently people miss my face. The level to which I was addicted over the last eight months as a coping mechanism. I'm all alone, I don't even know what to do. It's just a massive area down there. No, that's that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. I'm running on fumes here. Oh, uh, uh. It's just a smorgasbord of erotic noises coming out of Jeremiah's mouth. Listen, the truth of the matter is, I have had a problem the last eight months of being on the road as a solo male van lifer. And that problem is addiction to... Ah. Saw that coming. Now, enjoy Jeremiah setting up camp because the audio that I tried to record at camp is full of cicadas or whatever the heck those bugs are in the background. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. But this is the first day that I decided to go back into the woods with no service and stay well before sunset, well before it was time to go to sleep and wake up for a new day with no service and no plans other than to just hang out, set up my hammock, and go for a swim. Did you see what I did there? I'm not a smart man. This is a very interesting time for me. I am going through so much in my mind. going through so much in my my anxieties and my insecurities and my doubts and and my hopes I have this exciting prospect of a future in front of me that I am chasing and yet I often allow myself to drown it all in entertainment in addiction to endless scrolling YouTube and Netflix Something I'm sure we all can empathize with to various levels, but I definitely have been blowing it out of proportion. So I came out here, packed up my backpack, because the next day I was going to take things to the Jeremiah extreme and actually walk into the wilderness with even less ability to be able to distract my thoughts and nothing but miles and miles to think about my life. Also, it's about 95 degrees out right now, so we're going to jump in the six inches of water just beyond those hedges. Does everyone realize how much videos are lies? There is magic in the editing process. You can take something like that, which looks like this unedited. And you can turn it into this. So videos are kind of like a, like a beautiful lie. We're taking something chaotic and something without form and we're giving it form. So maybe it's not a lie, it's just a beautiful representation of reality in an unrealistic short time. I like that. That escalated quickly. Are you done? Another one. It's interesting how much I go out of my way to remain connected oftentimes to nothing. There are so many nights that I've sat in my van and nobody's responded to my messages or I haven't sent any messages or I haven't felt connected in any way to anyone or anything. It's just that you know the connection could be there. Not just connection like genuine human connection, but you know the flow of connectedness to the world is there and therefore the panic stays at bay. I've spent so many nights so incredibly alone in the last eight months because I would not let myself be with just myself. As soon as I decided to come out here, as soon as I decided to drive down this forest road towards this freecampsites.net spot, it was like I felt a weight lift off my heart, off my mind, because I knew I was doing the thing that I wanted to do and that I should be doing, and I was cutting out that addiction. But the level to which I was addicted over the last eight months as a coping mechanism to deal with everything that comes with living a weird, unconnected, unhinged, dirty, strange, threatening, insecure lifestyle out here in a van. Excuse me, do you know where the Spanish lakes are? It has been a long time since I ventured out into the woods alone with a tent, sleeping bag, and cooking paraphernalia along with the other 30 pounds of crap I somehow always managed to convince myself the night before that I definitely need to carry to the top of the mountain. 
My body immediately reminded me that driving around in a van with the AC on and occasionally doing some push-ups in the morning does not prepare me to carry my life on my back and climb a small mountain. This hike became emblematic of my life. This is the struggle bus. After finally admitting to myself that my addiction to entertainment was interfering with the way I wanted to live life, and therefore it was a real problem, I was excited to jump out of the land of entertainment and straight back into the wilderness, a land that gives me nothing but my thoughts and the sound of my own heavy breathing. After a surprising amount of river crossings, battles with monster horseflies, parasitic suckers, ugly, distasteful, miles of meaningless and yet so meaningfully boring thoughts and conversations in my head, the land finally stopped rising, my breathing slowed, my body ached, and I found myself at the top of the mountain, dehydrated, dead tired, and victorious. And then I was forced to make a very hard decision and I'm not sure I made the right one. Just as I'm setting up the tent, I just heard some thunder. We're still within tree line, so I have to decide whether I want to go down when I just got here or brave it in my tent. I gotta go think. Beautiful sky there. Not so beautiful sky there. I went and uh, watched the clouds for a little while and they all seem to be moving that direction. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. You know what? We're below tree line. All the water is running towards that creek. So I don't think we're gonna get washed out, but I'm gonna set the tent up and make some food. It's a bad idea. What's a bad idea? More thunder. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm one of those survivor shows where they show the highlights or whatever where the people break down. I'm all alone. I don't know what to do. I don't want to be here anymore. I can't do this. It's funny it's not far off from the truth. If I was hydrated enough to cry, did not I know I just got here and I know I just set the tent up and everything and that I was gonna stay, but the wind has started picking up and it's getting dark on all sides except for that side. We have to leave now. So I'm gonna pack up. The following is an unneeded moral lesson. This is also pretty emblematic of van life in general, but then I think in just life. This needs to stop now. Thus ends today's moral lesson. Let's get to work before this freaking storm rolls in. It's not even that I climbed all the way up here, walked all freaking day, and obviously I'm exhausted and was very much ready to enjoy the fruits of my labor. It's not even that. It's also that I might be wrong and I totally could have stayed, or I could just risk it. I could gamble. I've had to learn to trust my instincts, even if those instincts are perhaps on the on the side of fear rather than boldness. So I'm trusting my instinct here. I just didn't feel right about trying to stay, trying to risk it. So let's get down the mountain. Goodbye mountains. Goodbye thunderstorm. I forgot this campsite was here. Sound of the river, which is nice enough. I am maybe 1500 feet or 2000 feet lower than the summit where I was before. So I feel much, much better. It's probably still gonna rain, but I think it'll be much more mild down here. Oh, felt a raindrop. Now I'm questioning everything I just said. Oh my God. What a day, what a day, hallelujah. <laughs> Literally setting up in the rain. I guess I'm gonna go sit in my tent for 14 hours. Two plus two is four, quick mess. Come with me. No, God, please, no. Come inside my home. No! Oh man. Warning, you are about to enter the tent of a dehydrated, angry boy. <laughs> Bless me. Bless me with better weather, God. Maybe we'll get to use these bad boys. I hope so. But I have such a bad headache right now. Dehydrated, haven't eaten since this morning other than granola bars. So let's get to setting up a little camp. Then maybe scamper out and get some water. Make some ramen in here. Maybe read my book. Maybe come cuddle with me. I don't know why I said that. 
that's not a bad angle, right? So apparently no one told me throughout my entire build series. It's just me. I mean, me, when I would talk to the camera, first of all, I was exhausted and frustrated. So I would sit like this in my shorts uh, on the edge of the van. And it's just a massive, you know, it's just a massive area down there. No, that's, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Just go watch the videos and you'll see. Or ask somebody. Because apparently even strangers who have barely watched any of my videos notice. But for some reason no one told me. Maybe that means they are enjoying it? I don't know. Oh, and then I have a little blow up pillow here. Which is awesome. And it's wet because my camelback is leaking. What a good day! It's been such a good day in the neighborhood. A little bit crazy in the neighborhood. I am dehydrated. I am dehydrated. But at least I have my Mike Wazowski pillow. At least I got chicken! I think it stopped raining. It's only uh, 6.30, but it, the storm is overhead now, so I can't really be outside. And I'm feeling pretty pretty good, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm cloudy and and uh, sleepy still, but what? I don't didn't even mean to say that. I'm cloudy and have a headache still, but I'm sleepy. So I think I'm gonna just try to fall asleep now and if I can sleep for 12 hours, that would be great. It's not gonna happen. So long for now. <laughs> Here's Johnny. You know what I realized? Walking back on that trail, I make a lot of sounds. Mmm. Oh. Oh, okay, the last one, maybe for dramatic effect, but I was walking down the trail and this nice older gentleman who I could only hope to dream of being that old and that nice and that far into the hot, sweaty wilderness all at the same time. He asked me, how's your day going? Full of cheer and full of love and full of all those warm, good feelings. And I, the, the first thing I did was, oh, that was, that was the sound I made. I didn't, I've used words afterward, but I started with, oh, and then I thought, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me as a way to respond, but does it make sense to somebody else? And then I started thinking about like, when I'm at a restaurant and the waiter waiter or waitress comes up and asks, how's your food? I don't think I've ever said, it's good. I think I go, oh, or I go, mm, or I go, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. It's just a, just a smorgasbord of, of erotic noises coming out of Jeremiah's mouth when you ask him how his food is or how his day is going. <laughs> I'm gonna go try to find a shower and a laundromat because we are, we are so dirty. We are so dirty. Ah, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No.